The STT-800 industrial gas turbine combines a robust design with excellent efficiency and emission performance. Across the modern world, from massive cities to remote industrial zones, a single machine powers much of humanity's energy demand, the gas turbine. When engineers pair that turbine with a steam cycle, it becomes something extraordinary, the combined cycle gas turbine. This system represents the pinnacle of power generation technology, capable of turning fuel into electricity, with efficiencies that once seemed impossible. The concept behind it is surprisingly straightforward. The gas turbine operates in a way that's almost identical to a jet engine. Air is drawn in and compressed to high pressure. Then, natural gas is injected and mixed with the air inside a combustor. The mixture ignites, producing extremely hot, high-pressure gas. That gas races through rows of turbine blades, spinning them at incredible speed. The rotational energy from the turbine turns a central shaft, which is connected to an electrical generator. Inside the generator, the rotating magnets produce a moving magnetic field. This field induces current in the surrounding copper coils, creating electricity. It's the same principle as an electric motor, but in reverse. Instead of using electricity to create motion, it uses motion to create electricity. The produced current is then fed into the power grid, lighting up homes, factories and cities. When analyzing such a system, the most important metric is efficiency, how effectively it converts energy from one form to another. Engineers define efficiency as the ratio of useful energy output to total energy input, multiplied by 100%. In the case of a turbine generator unit, both the turbine and generator contribute to the final result. Their combined efficiencies determine how much of the original fuel energy becomes usable electricity. Among fossil fuels, natural gas stands out for its high energy density. Aside from hydrogen, it contains more energy per unit of mass than almost any other commonly available fuel. That's one reason gas turbines are so powerful and efficient. In large-scale single-cycle operation, meaning without heat recovery, modern turbines can generate around 400 megawatts of power with an efficiency near 40%. That's enough to supply electricity for roughly 300,000 average homes in North America. But engineers knew this wasn't the limit. The exhaust gases leaving the turbine remain incredibly hot, and all that thermal energy could be used for something more. Letting it escape into the atmosphere would be a waste. So they found a way to capture it. The answer was the combined cycle. In this configuration, the exhaust from the gas turbine is directed into a heat recovery steam generator, essentially a large boiler. There, the heat is used to convert water into steam. That steam powers a second turbine, a steam turbine, which drives another generator. Together, these two turbines form a thermodynamic partnership the Brayton cycle for the gas turbine and the Rankine cycle for the steam turbine. The waste heat from one becomes the input energy for the other, creating a beautifully efficient system. This integration pushes overall plant efficiency to astonishing levels. The best modern combined cycle plants can reach around 64% thermal efficiency. That means almost two-thirds of the fuel's total energy becomes electricity, a record unmatched by any other combustion-based technology. Only hydroelectric turbines, like those used in France's massive dam systems, operate at slightly higher efficiencies. By comparison, coal power plants are far less efficient. They can't inject coal directly into turbines. Instead, coal must be burned in a furnace to heat water, producing steam to turn a turbine. Even the most advanced supercritical coal plants, which operate at extremely high temperatures and pressures, reach around 45 to 50% efficiency. Some designs use multiple turbines or reheating stages to recover additional energy, but they still lag far behind combined cycle systems. Nuclear plants face similar thermodynamic limits. In a nuclear reactor, energy is produced through fission, the splitting of uranium atoms. That heat is transferred by a coolant to create steam, which then drives a turbine. Because the process relies entirely on the steam cycle, nuclear power plants typically achieve about 35 to 37 percent efficiency. However, nuclear energy has a unique advantage, its fuel density. 
A single uranium pellet, smaller than a fingertip, can generate as much energy as one tonne of coal or over 17,000 cubic feet of natural gas. Even with lower efficiency, the immense energy density makes nuclear an unmatched long-term energy source. Efficiency, though, is not the only factor that matters. Economic and logistical realities play an equally important role. Natural gas power depends on extensive infrastructure, drilling, pipelines, and storage. It also relies on stable fuel prices. In countries with abundant natural gas, such as the United States, Qatar, or Australia, combined cycle plants are ideal. But in regions that must import their gas, costs can rise dramatically, making them less appealing. Nuclear power, while expensive to build, excels in long duration or isolated applications. Submarines, remote research bases, and spacecraft all use compact nuclear systems because they can operate for years without refueling. That reliability makes them ideal for missions far from traditional fuel supplies. This idea naturally leads to another frontier in power technology, nuclear fusion. Fusion aims to recreate the same process that powers the sun, fusing light atomic nuclei to release massive amounts of energy. For decades, scientists have worked toward the dream of a fusion reactor that produces more power than it consumes. However, that goal, known as net energy gain, remains out of reach. The most advanced design today is the tokamak, a donut-shaped reactor that uses powerful magnetic fields to confine plasma hotter than the sun's core. One leading example is Spark, a compact fusion project developed by Commonwealth Fusion Systems in collaboration with MIT. Spark aims for a cube engineering value of around 0.5 comma, meaning it produces only half as much energy as it consumes. To compete with conventional power plants, that value would need to reach at least 20. Achieving that requires major advances in materials and magnet technology. Superconducting magnets are central to this challenge. If scientists can develop magnets that operate at higher temperatures while maintaining extremely strong magnetic fields beyond 20 Tesla, fusion reactors could finally produce net energy. Other designs, such as stellarators or field-reversed configurations, also show promise but remain experimental. For now, fusion continues to be a technology of the future rather than the present. Meanwhile, another innovation is gaining attention – the supercritical carbon dioxide turbine. This system uses CO2 as the working fluid, compressed and heated above its critical point, where it behaves like both a gas and a liquid. This unique property allows exceptional heat transfer and compact turbine design. Such turbines can be up to 10 times smaller than traditional steam turbines, yet capable of reaching efficiencies as high as 70%. That's beyond anything currently achieved by conventional systems. A related idea is oxycombustion, burning natural gas with pure oxygen instead of air. This produces a concentrated exhaust of carbon dioxide and water vapour, making it easy to capture and store emissions. However, CO2 at high temperatures can corrode turbine components. Engineers are developing new nickel-based super alloys and thermal barrier coatings to combat this. Several small pilot projects are already underway, producing between 2 and 10 megawatts of power, showing the technology is nearing practicality. Even with all these emerging systems, the combined cycle gas turbine remains the global standard for efficiency and reliability. It's the workhorse of modern power grids, fast to start, flexible in operation, and highly efficient. While renewables like wind and solar continue to expand, their intermittency means that gas turbines are still essential for balancing the grid and maintaining stable electricity supplies. Ultimately, every form of power generation represents a balance between efficiency, cost, sustainability, and scalability. The combined cycle turbine demonstrates what's possible when engineering maximizes every stage of energy conversion. It takes what was once waste heat and turns it into valuable power, pushing the boundaries of thermodynamics. Fusion may someday surpass it.
Supercritical CO2 turbines might one day redefine efficiency. But for now, the combined cycle gas turbine stands as one of the greatest triumphs in energy engineering. A machine that transforms fire, air and water into electricity with unmatched precision. And the question remains, what will come next? Will humanity finally master fusion, or continue perfecting the turbine until it reaches its ultimate limit? For now, the combined cycle gas turbine remains our best answer. Efficient, powerful, and brilliantly engineered.